Hello there everybody, welcome back to the railway. Sam's Trains here and today I've got another review for you. Today it's this, which once again I've managed to find a very very nondescript box. <laughs> um, and of course you'll know this is not a Hornby box or anything like that. Uh, this is just the box uh, that this particular loco came in um, from the previous owner. Uh, but I thought, well, it's more interesting to actually take locos out of boxes rather than just present them to you. So even though it's not the correct box or any sort of relevant box, I thought I might as well unbox it from this just for the interest of doing it. Uh, so let's take a look at the side. They have actually written on it, it says A4, Sir so Nigel Gresley, which gives it away. So without any further ado, let's take the lid off so that you can actually see the loco. Ah. Oh no, it's upside down. Typical. All right, here we go. Sneaky maneuver. There we go. And yeah, this is the yes, this is the third and final A4 that I've got. Uh, I've got three of them, uh, and I've reviewed the other two, which is Gadwell and Mallard. Uh, but I've never done this one, and I thought, well, I might as well do uh, because they're all lovely, and it gives me a chance to run some A4s, which I know that all of you like. Well, a lot of you like. I can't say all of you, uh, but most people love A4s. So I thought this would be a really nice thing to do, uh, just for a bit of fun. So let's take the loco and tender out. Then we'll start with the loco, number four four nine eight. As you can see, lovely A4 Pacific there. Put her to one side, I'll let you have a, a better look at her in just a second when we get to the review part. And then the tender, lovely blue l &E tender there. Typical Hornby really. And uh, yeah, that's that. So let's take them up onto the white background and we'll start with a little review of her. So there she is then, a beautiful Hornby A4 in this gorgeous l &E blue. And before I start the review, as always, now I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of information about these locos because they really, really are very interesting and I suppose even they could be considered Britain's favourite steam locomotives. Somewhat controversially, but you know. Anyway, so these were produced uh, between 1935 and 1938. 35 of them, uh, designed of course by Sir Nigel Gresley, uh, which funnily enough is the name of this loco, as we've already mentioned. The first of which was Silver Link, uh, which we've probably seen. I think it was painted silver as well, wasn't it? Very unusual looking. Uh, but it was the first one to be steamed up and the first one to be run. So as I said then, there were 35 of these built during the 30s, but only 34 of them emerged from the Second World War because unfortunately one of them was destroyed during that period. And that one was Gadwell. Uh, well, we know it as Gadwell. I think the original name was Sir Ralph Wedgwood or something like that. Yes, it was that. Uh, and that was number 4469, which is Gadwell's number. And uh, it wasn't completely destroyed in the war, but it was taken back to Doncaster and they couldn't fix it, so they scrapped it. And I think the tender was also then moved on to another locomotive, one of uh, Thompson's. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, of course, the A4 Mallard very famously holds the world's speed record for steam locomotives at 126 miles per hour. And I don't think that's ever been beaten, hence why it's the world speed record. And luckily there are six of them preserved, including Mallard, and of course including Sir Nigel Gresley as well, luckily, uh, which is great. And of course we can have wonderful things like the great gatherings and all of that, the great goodbye from Hornby and all that stuff. Uh, and they're just wonderful, lovely locomotives. So let's take a look at this example then. It's quite an old Hornby one, this, uh, but still very, very elegant. And of course the livery is very iconic. It's sort of the well-known livery, I suppose, for the A4. Of course we see them in the BR green and sometimes in black, I think Hornby are doing a black one at some point. And you know, various different colours, but this sort of l &ER blue is the well-known one, uh, and it's probably the most popular as well. Uh, so this loco isn't badly detailed at all, as you can see there's plenty of rivets on this one. Uh, and that really does help to make her look very realistic, I think. And of course with engines like this, it's not really about the detail um, in terms of whether they're realistic or not. It's about the shape. And just look at that beautiful streamlined shape and the livery, this sort of black, you know, black painted area at the front, just really, really is quite modern looking, isn't it? Considering this is from the 30s. Uh, but yeah, wonderful. And the nameplate, of course, Sir Nigel Gresley, which is very elegantly done. And you've not got a bad amount of separately fitted parts either. Of course, the nameplate is separately fitted. Uh, the whistle there at the front is. You've got coupling hooks. You've got the big handrail, as I say. Uh, you've also got glazed windows, which are yellow for some bizarre reason. <laughs> but yep, sure, why ever not? Uh, and there's also some people inside the cab, which you might be able to see through the window. Uh, but you'll see them a little better later on when I take the uh, tender off and let you look inside the cab. But as I was saying before, there's there's lots of rivets, you know, all along the top, look, along the seam, which helps to uh, disguise it, I suppose. And then you've got the rivets all around the front, underneath the nameplate, all over the bottom there. And you've got this sort of wonderful texture. I suppose that textured area there might be to improve uh, grip, maybe, uh, on people who are walking up and down there. Uh, because it's quite sloped just there, isn't it? That could be why. 
And uh, yeah, it's really good, isn't it? It's really nice looking. Uh, let's take a look at the side of the cab, number 4498, as I've already said. Uh, lovely looking number, well printed. The font is just perfect, isn't it? And uh, there is a badge under there, and it looks like it might have said something at one point, uh, but sadly that's worn off, so mm, not, not a big deal, but never mind. Uh, let's take a look on the top of the cab then. Again, quite nicely riveted. Um, plenty of moulded detail there. Sadly, none of these air intakes or anything open up, uh, but that's fairly typical for this Hornby period. And of course, on top of there, you've got a couple of safety valves as well, which are separately fitted and are metal, not plastic, which is always great. And around the cab area, you've got glazed windows which face forward as well, uh, which is always a nice touch. Uh, so let's take a look inside the cab now then while we're here. You can see what I mentioned already, you've got Bill and Ben there as they're affectionately named. These are painted as well, they've kept with the uh, black suits as you can see but their skin and all that's been painted nicely. And if you can see just beyond those you've got quite nicely painted cab detail as well which is absolutely fantastic when Hornby do that. Uh, and although it is just gold painting it really makes a massive difference even though you can't really see it at all from the outside. Just the fact that you know it's there really just bring out a lot of realism, which is great. Uh, let's take around the front then. You haven't got a buffer beam as such, but you have got the running number, which is very finely printed on there, number 4498. As well as the class underneath, you can just about make out that it says A4. And there's something else on the left too, which I can't quite make out. But generally the area is quite well detailed with plenty of rivets and such. Uh, so that's a good look at the locomotive. Let's take a look at the linkage. And as you can see, it's sort of covered. I don't know what the... Uh, there was a name for it, isn't it? This sort of covering. Uh, and my ballard doesn't have it. And you'll see my lord later on. Uh, but yes, you can't see the linkage too well now. Uh, but hopefully when we get her running, you will do. And it's very, very elegant. And very, very unusual uh, to see this covering. To see this covering the linkage and such. Uh, but still. Okay, let's move on to the tender then. Of course, it's a very plain tender. Tender, uh, but there are handrails there, but they are moulded, they don't appear to be separately fitted. Having said that, the L and ER text is quite nicely printed, as you can see. Uh, it's very unblemished as well, it's survived quite well. Underneath, we've got plenty of detail, well, moulded detail on the undercarriage, uh, including some steps, springs, suspension, whatnot. Up on the top, you've got some very railroad-esque coal, uh, which is quite large, out of scale, uh, and clunky, uh, but we can tell it's coal, so essentially it does its job. You can also see on top there, you've got this corridor connection, uh, which links, well, presumably the coaches to the locomotive. Um, I suppose it makes that a little bit more elegant, so you don't have to see people climbing messily in and out of the locomotive. Uh, but yep, that's quite nice. Uh, moving around the back there then, as I mentioned, you've got the corridor connection, uh, which would connect to the coaches, as well as a few bits of moulded detail here and there, and quite a nice red painted buffer beam, uh, but it doesn't have any rivets or anything to speak of like that. But generally it's quite an elegant tender, and it absolutely does its job, so it's not an issue at all. So generally then, it's a very elegant looking locomotive, despite not being massively detailed, it certainly does the job, and I suppose Hornby have really captured the look of the A4, uh, as they do with all A4s really, I've never had an A4 that I've been disappointed with, even the railroad ones, uh, but still, uh, that should do it then, let's get her down onto the railway, get some l &ER coaches hooked up to her, and you can all see how she runs. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so there she is then down on the line, number 4498, looking absolutely gorgeous. And behind her, uh, as probably expected, I've got the five Eleni Artique coaches, uh, which she's going to couple to in a moment. Although I will warn you, she hasn't got much uh, slow speed performance at all. In fact, it's basically non-existent. Uh, but she's not a bad runner when she gets up to speed, so that's not too bad. On the other line then, we've got the lovely Mallard, number 60022. And she's again another lovely A4 Pacific, this time in the BR Green. And because she's in BR, I decided I'd sort of put some BR coaches behind her. Well, they're actually intercity coaches, but they're the sort of nice blue ones. And she looks pretty smart pulling those, and there's four of those, so that should be pretty good. But uh, for now, then, let's give Nigel a little bit of slow speed running. Although I've already warned you, she's not going to do very well. Uh, but let's at least attempt to couple to the coaches, then. There we go. That was backwards. <laughs> not great. Try and get it slow. Nope, not at all. She sort of doesn't kick in until you get to a good higher speed, so... There you go. Right, well, let's couple anyway. And, uh, yeah, let's take those coaches away then. Here we go. There you go. It is a ring-field motor in there, so it's, it's not the best. In contrast, though, Mallard is an absolutely fantastic slow runner, so having said that, let's give her a little try at slow speed. Look at that for a crawl. She's the best crawler. Right, let's get her going then. Full steam ahead. 
There we go. Right, let's take a look at these lovely girls going round. Look at her go. That mallard's fantastic, isn't it? I'm sorry if she's stealing the show slightly. So hopefully you can see that they're both really, really good runners. They really are outstanding when they perform. And of course they look absolutely gorgeous too, but you know, that's typical of Hornby. Well then everybody, I hope you've really enjoyed this one. Uh, I personally love getting the A4s out and letting them have a good run, so I really enjoy this sort of thing. So hopefully you do as well. Um, but yep, yeah, that's all I've got to show you. So if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like or even subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see some more. But otherwise you can uh, go and check out the Facebook and Twitter pages if you'd like to at facebook.com forward slash samstrains and twitter.com forward slash samstrains. I often post content, pictures and all sorts of updates on there so if you're interested in that sort of thing uh, then that's something you can do. Uh, but for now everybody, thank you very much for watching again as always and I'll see you very soon. Cheers everybody.